we are at our first transfer window in charge of Huddersfield. I do want to make some major changes to this squad. I think we need some quality improvements in the right areas to enable us to potentially uh, qualify for the playoffs. We'll have to wait and see how that goes. Let's go view the fixtures that you've missed. So, of course, in the last episode, we beat Burnley and Sunderland. We continued the win and run away from home against Portsmouth. Lewis O'Brien and Albion Ajetti with two goals for us. Josh Bowler with one for them. And what was a pretty confident performance by us and three points. We then had the top of the table Wolves at home and we managed to get ourselves a win. This was a huge, huge result against a team far superior. They've got Anthony Martial on the side. I mean... It's a little bit crazy to get a win against these. Albion is yet to get in the goal in, in the 49th minute to beat the league leaders. And what do you do when you beat the league leaders? You go away from home against Brentford and get beat 3-0. <laughs> Dominic Solanke, Amal Joseph and Mazian Meolida with the goals for Brentford. And it was a pretty even game if you look at the match stats. And unfortunately for us, they were just far more clinical. We did bounce back though with a 2-0 away win against Cardiff. Ryan Niambi and Liam Cooper with the goals. Away from home against Preston next and we won 3-0 Ajeti, Gull and Sobby with the goals. Another win this time at home against Nottingham Forest. Malik, Wilkes, Albion, Ajeti and Mick Quirk with the goals in this one. We then had Manchester City in the League Cup quarter final and unfortunately got ourselves beat. Jose Jimenez giving them the goal in the 43rd minute and that was the goal that finished the tie. A disappointing 0-0 home draw against Swansea as we return a league action. We didn't perform very well in this one. And we didn't perform very well in this one either. 2-1 defeat away from home against Millwall. They did go down to 10 men as well for the final nine minutes of the game. We missed a penalty early on. It's, it was just all around a poor performance from the boys. So as things stand at the moment, this is how the championship table looks. We are nine points off Hull in sixth place. So whilst we've massively improved our league position, we haven't actually improved the point difference between us and the playoffs all that much. We do have a game in hand on Hull though, which could become in our favour and reduce that gap to six points. But we need to do it quickly. So as you can see, we are at the 1st of January. A lot of our players are currently wanting Mick Quirk. I'm not selling him. Our backup goalkeeper I would let leave. Janino is running out of contract. Luke Daly is wanted by Premier League sides, as is Lewis O'Brien. Two of our best performers this season. So um, we need to be mindful of that and try and keep a hold of them. I don't really... Lewis O'Brien, I would sell. <laughs> he's 26. He hasn't got that much. He's got no potential to grow. If we could get £20 million pounds for him or something, I might be tempted. But saying that, we've sort of already really got a lot of our transfer business in the pipeworks if everything should go as is expected. We'll quickly go on the team report and I'll show you where I'm thinking that we need the improvement. Striker. Straight, I wouldn't mind two new strikers to be quite honest with you, but at least one, maybe two. A new attack midfielder, I think we need Sobby and Marcondes is not really doing it for me. Central midfield, we're absolutely fine with. We've got some of our best players playing in that position. Right wing back, we need somebody to come in who is natural in that position and can really give us that attack and threat down the right hand side. A backup left wing back is what I'm after as well. And if we can find a centre back, I would be pretty happy with that, but. If we can't, I think we've got more than good enough centre-backs for this league. So let's take you to the offers that I've currently made then. Kazoo is a left-back who is Japanese. He will be playing back up to Luke Daly. But I think he's more than capable back up. And we will be paying quite a bit in his, uh, for a loan deal. I think it's around £100,000 per month. And then the other 20 k is his wages. But I would be happy to bring him in just to see us through the rest of this season. Um, give us that option off the bench that we don't really have at the moment. And I would be happy to bring him in. The other one is Ruben Burgos from Liverpool. He's a right wing back, natural in that position, fantastic physicals. Very much more attacking than Ryan Niambia, who is playing in that position currently. And I hope we can bring this deal over the line. He's decent defensively as well with his 15 tackling, his 12 positioning. So I think that will be a good sign in to see us over the line. Our first permanent transfer could potentially be Samuel Stank. Or we've made a £2.2 .2 million offer to Cagliari for his services and a Tatton midfield player who I think is far far better than the likes of Ramadan Sobby. As you can see here Ramadan Sobby is currently our starting attack and midfielder. He's in the blue. Samuel Stanko is in the green. <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty ridiculous how much Samuel Stanko is better than Sobby. So we will look to make that transfer as soon as humanly possible. He is one where I don't know if it's actually going to go through. Tobias Abrahamson, a Norwegian striker, 
Uh, we've made a £1 million offer. They did one for four. They've then decided to go take that back and haven't actually gave us a decision just yet. The reason why I went in for him is the likes of FC Porto were interested in a transfer and that's always something to look out for when one of the major European clubs is interested in a younger player. And I'll, I'll probably be happy with him coming in. He's definitely a more well-rounded advance forward than what we've got at the club right now. Uh, he's just more specialised in that role compared to the likes of Albi and Ajeti, who's more of a pressing forward. He's more well-rounded, but his core attributes are not quite as good. So as you can see here, I'm just comparing him to Albi and Ajeti. We'll get the advance forward tab up. Um, mentally, Albi and Ajeti does have the probably the ropes on him, but in the key areas, not really. Anticipation, composure, decisions, off the ball, and work rate. He's got the better work rate, but everything else is either matched or better for Tobias Abrahamson. Technically, he's better. Physically, he's better. So for £1 million, I wouldn't mind bringing him in. And another striker. Strike, striker? What's a striker? A striker. Dimitri Principato. He's not quite Esposito, but he's getting there. He's Italian. He's from Roma. He's a loan offer. We do actually have, if he does join the club, we do actually have a £6.5 million agreed fee if he's absolutely superb and we want to take him either to the Premier League or keep him in the Championship depending on our position come the end of the season and I hope this guy is going to be an absolute monster. So that's the transfer business what I've started with. The likelihood is some of these deals won't go through, they might fall through and not go ahead so uh, we've got to be prepared for that. And if we do end up getting those players into the club, there will be some leaving. We're going to have to make room in the squad because add five players to this list and we've got an absolutely massive squad. And I don't like big squads. I like it to be slick, lean, but with enough, enough cover to be able to cover us during an injury crisis. But that's that. We've got, I think it's five or six games over this January transfer period. Hull is the first one. I'll go and play that and show you the result. But before we get into that, we've had an offer for Luke Daly. It's absolutely not happening in Southampton. They're offering 13.25. He's got a 31.5 million minimum fee release clause, which is what it will take for him to leave the club. I'm not selling him for a penny less and uh, Southampton can go and do one. A huge, huge win. Hull City with the team sitting in sixth, who we were chasing to get into that playoff spot and we've just absolutely smashed them 3-0. Fabio Barini with a brace, Christopher Thomas with one, they got a man sent off with 17 minutes to go. It didn't really make that much of a difference and the boys have done well there. So this lad's contract is running out and a lot of, well, big teams, Man City, Wolfsburg, Sampdoria and Porto have all went in and offered a contract. I've got a feeling I would have to offer him a pretty major, major contract if we are to be able to bring him into our club. I think I'm going to do it and hope that Inter Milan want maybe a million pounds for him to sign him in the January transfer window if he does accept our offer. It's likely that he's going to join Manchester City anyway, but I'm going to take a chance. So this lad has just popped up on my screen from my scout reports and he looks pretty, pretty good for a 20-year-old Englishman available for between 125 and 250k. Now, I'm not exactly sure if he would make it into our starting 11. If we're comparing to John Stankovic, who's kind of our third choice, physically, he's got the ability to beat him. Mentally, not quite there. Technically, not quite there either. But at 250k, it seems like a good bit of business for us. And I would play him. As long as we're in the championship, I would play him all day. So, Mould came back and they won 4 million for this boy. I'm not paying that sort of money. He's not the kind of striker... That will guarantee us goals in the championship. He might develop wonderfully, um, but £4 million is a bit too rich for me. We do have plenty of money. We've got £10 million and 100 k spare in the wages, but with all these deals going through, I'm not willing to spend that sort of money on him. The signings are starting to flow in. First up is Ruben Burgos, going to be our first choice right wing back. Very, very talented Argentinian, currently playing for Liverpool. He joins us on loan for the rest of this season. Kazu. The Japanese left wing back will be coming in as our backup left wing back. Even though he's probably championship quality and probably could get a starting time. He's not going to oust Luke Daly. So we'll sign him. And Samuel Stanko. I'm expecting big things from this boy. £2.2 .2 million is a bit of a bargain. Another Italian coming into the squad. We will, I'm happy with all of them bits of business. Now obviously them three signings mean we've got to slim this squad down a little bit. I'm going to be offering some players out. See if we can get a bit of dosh for them. 
So we offered out Rabadam Sobby. It looks like we're going to get £6.75 million from him. I'm only going to accept that Brentford bid. I do not want to be paying any of his wages. So hopefully he will accept Brentford and leave the club for £6.75 million. That's a decent swap for Samuel. Uh, what was his name? <laughs> was it Sonko? Stanko. Uh, £2.2 million pence for him. 6.75 for Ramadan Sobby. I will take that all day. So we've just played Bristol Rovers in the third round of the FA Cup and got ourselves a 4-1 away win. Mick Quirk with one, Albion Ajeti with two and Fabio Barini from the penalty spot. Our next new signing, Dimitri Principato, joining us on loan for the rest of the season from Roma. I'm hoping this lad can fire us to glory. He is more of a target man going by his role, but he will be playing at an advanced forward. He's more than capable of doing that. And I just hope he can do the business in the championship. And if he does, and if he improves, we've got a £6.5 million agreed fee with Roma to be able to sign him on a permanent basis. But that all depends on his performances and his development over the course of this season. But I'm happy to get him in. He's been in England two minutes, edit a kebab and got food poisoning. Brilliant. What do you think of this guy? Christian de Hool, available on loan. He's not really interested in a transfer. Um, Boca Juniors won't talk to me about a transfer either as I've already messed about with it and now they won't talk to me. Um, it would cost quite a lot in loan fees and he's not that fast. I think I'll pass. It's hard because he's, he's rated higher than any of our strikers currently by me scouts but how much do you trust them? I don't really know. Um, he's wanted by a lot of clubs on loan. I think I think I'll pass on this one. Well, we're not getting that young <laughs> Italian striker. He's agreed to join Manchester City. That's not a surprise. Now this lad looks like he's going to be something a little bit special. We can agree a fee with FC Basel for his transfer. Unfortunately for us, he's just signed a new contract, so he's not interested in discussing a deal with me. Uh, I'll try it again. We'll, make, we'll just to make sure. As you can see, he's got minimum fee release clause of about 4.3. I think we can get him for slightly less than that, really. Um, I think we can get him for around three to three and a half million pounds. We'll make a two and a half million pound off. I see what the say. Um, we'll go to the last negotiation here. We want to keep as much of our money in our pockets as possible. Uh, still one 4.2. We'll go 3.8. So as you can see, we can agree a deal with FC Basel. He just don't, he just won't talk to me, please. Wow, we've just managed to squeak past Sheffield Wednesday away from home. They took the lead through Hayden Armstrong 16 minutes in. Ruben Berjos and Fabio Barini got two goals in two minutes to put us in front. And despite an onslaught from Sheffield Wednesday in the second half, we survived. So I'm back at it again with the loan offers. I've made a loan offer for Ben Beachy from West Ham's under-23 squad. We would only be playing his wages for the duration of the loan. And I think he's a smart, smart signing. He's got the pace, which our Italian striker doesn't really have. He's got some very, very talent, very, very good technicals as well. And English, I think, would be a good signing. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Another signing coming in this time, a permanent one. Ali Iradunku. Oh, why did I sign him? I can't see his name. <laughs> Ali Iradakunda. And that's what we're going to go for. A decent a, a decent English centre-half who will provide strength and depth. And at 350k was the fee we ended up paying for him. A lot of clubs ended up coming in, so we upped our wage a little bit to be able to get him over the line. But he's got plenty of potential to grow. I think I'm going to try and make him a starter, to be quite honest with you. Um, just force him into the squad, see if he can develop. And yeah, I'm happy with that loan pretty cheap as well. Christian Thomas is leaving us after signing our Japanese left wing back. He is no longer required, so he's going to go out and loan to Grimsby Town for the rest of the season. Huge, huge win. We've just beat second place Stoke City 1-0 at home. They were, they were very dominant, might I just add. Albion Ajeti got the goal in the seventh minute from the penalty spot. The only goal of the game, a fantastic, fantastic defensive performance from us. And three points against one of the best sides in the league. We can't ask for more than that. And there is Ramadan Sobi leaving the club. 6.75 million brought into the club's coffers. We will take that all day. We'll quickly check, see where that leaves our transfer balance. We currently sit with 11 million pounds still left to spend. With 75k per week available should it be needed. We've still got Ben Beachy to join the club if he decides he wants to. Um, and I'm assuming he's going to. He's, he was interested in a loan deal and nobody else has currently went in. That leaves us with a lot of money still to spend. Hmm. 
And there is Ben Beachy agreeing to join the club for the rest of the season. That fills the major gaps that I was looking to fill during this January transfer window. So now, if anybody else is to be signed, it's because they are far better than what we've got and not just a problem position where we need to get bodies in. But Ben Beachy comes in, a three-star player. He's going to be starting up top with our Italian and I'm hoping for big things from the pair of them. So project get rid of some dead wood is underway. Malik Wilkes, I've accepted two offers from both Brighton and Middlesbrough. 4.7 from Middlesbrough, but a little bit of wages being paid. And 4.4 million from Brighton. Uh, Billy Arse is leaving as well. I've accepted 5.75 million from all of these clubs. Hopefully he is happy with at least one of them. And he leaves the club and frees up some wages and some transfer budget. Oh, that was a very, very tough game. Newcastle away from home, currently sitting in third position. We managed to get ourselves a 1-1 draw, but they were down to 10 men for the entirety of the second half. So we were very, very fortunate. Even going by the match stats, Newcastle still dominated. Um, Albion Ejeti came on late on and got us a 93rd minute equaliser. Well, sometimes it happens. We've just played a home tie against Redden and got beat 2 0 John Stankovic on goal, George Puskas scores for them. Uh, player of the match for their goalkeeper. Sometimes it just happens and it's devastating when it does. <laughs> Another defeat. This time it was a little bit more understandable. FA Cup fourth round against Premier League Norwich City. Mick Quirk on goal. Second in two games. Dimitri Pr uh, Prince Zapato got his first goal for the club though in the 39th minute. But then Durvin Zapata got a goal in the 76th to knock us out. So that was the final game of the January transfer window. So we will take a look at where we are in the championship. We currently see five points outside of the playoff spots after those run of games. We've not been playing too badly, um, but we haven't been playing perfectly either. Five points. Only, what's that, 13 games remaining? We can do that. We can definitely, definitely do that. Hopefully, our boys hit the ground running for the second half of the season. The January transfer window is not over though by any stretch of the imagination. We've still got about a week left. Um, I'm imagining a lot of deals might end up getting done on the last day of this uh, of the window. We've got 11 million pounds still with 70k remaining with more money coming in. As you know, I don't really like making big money moves in the championship. I would much rather use loan signings to be able to get things done. There's Willock Slaven for 4.4 million pounds. Um, purely down to saving the money for if we were to get promoted to the Premier League we've got the higher reputation and the players are more likely to be of much better quality um, for cheaper prices once you're in the Premier League but that does leave you in a bit of a dilemma do you hold the money thinking you're going to get promoted or do you spend the money on getting promoted do I think our squad is good enough to get promoted I am not entirely sure on that one there's Billy R. Slaven 5.75 million pounds added to the balance so this will now give us a pretty healthy uh, bank balance in terms of our transfers. We've now got 18.95 million with 100k available in the wages. I am trying to move on Carl and Grant as well. Um, he could either go out and loan and free up some money or get get signed. That I'm going to start offering him out on the last day. I haven't had much interest uh, so far during the January transfer window. But on, I'm going to stick to my principles unless... A massively major player becomes available who I, who I would sign in the Premier League. I'm going to hold off. So just a little quick thing as to how I actually search for players. I've had a good couple of questions in the comment section. Uh, how I find players like Kaiji Goto and stuff like that. I'm going to make it. It's very, very simple. I'm only using really the search tool that's available to everyone throughout the game. So I start off with, you see, interest in transfer. You click the little uh, settings icon when it wants to load. You click the little settings icon here and you set this to doubtful. I want to see every player that is even the minimalistic bit interested in a transfer to us and get them into the contract room and then you can make the signing. Obviously, the probably would require higher wages than if you were a higher reputation club, but you really want to see as many players as possible on this list. And on that line, make sure your senior packages and youth packages are set to world. Uh, the amount of times I've accidentally looked for players and me packages were only UK and Ireland, you're not going to have very many players show up unless they are set to the higher packages. Your scouting budget will be depleted quite quickly, um, but you can transfer transfer budget into that to keep the list going. Um, so that's how I make sure I've got as many players as possible on the search. And then after that, it's as simple as you like. So let's say I'm searching for a striker. Click the striker icon. Um, I'm always looking for players under the age of 23 and no older. 
and then on the attributes you click pick you highlight key attributes you go to attack and you go to advance forward which is what i use in my systems you can choose whatever you like go on attack you click ok and that sets these attributes to filter for those specific players now you're not going to find anyone on your first go so 15 attributes have been highlighted i want at least 11 of them to have matched my specific number and as you can see i'm still getting no players found because it is quite a high attribute so we start going down the list we've got two players showing up now with 14s and at least 11 of the attributes that we've highlighted for advanced forward i'm going to go down again i like to be able to see around 50 players so we've got 64 players available there that is now showing up in the attributes uh one quick way which i really really recommend to find very very talented youngsters is to sort them by the information and then go on to the wanted and have a look at see who is actually wanting them as you can see mickey orm is wanted by arsenal that probably means he's got pretty good potential to grow um if the major sides are interested in europe that's a good sign as you can see here christian de Hul is wanted by manchester city this was the guy we were talking about earlier um obviously a very 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 good sign and then you've got 64 players here you can either scout them all um, i generally don't do that because it takes a very long time for the scout reports to come in i will then filter by maybe put the physicals on see who the fastest players are and then take a look like this simple as you like you're flicking through you, you're making snap judgments on players which isn't always the best way to go but like a guy like this 19 years old fantastic physicals his mentals aren't quite there and at 19 years old he's probably a little bit too long in his development to not be further on um in terms of his attributes so and this is how i do it basically i flick through these i'll get scout reports on specific players and um, i'll make offers for specific players kaiji goto i did not want a scout report i didn't need one i already seen that he was good enough and i went straight in for the sign in there but that's how i do it um if you were interested and this is why sometimes you wait to the end of the transfer window to start offering out your players. I had no interest at all for Carl and Grant. And now it's the final day of the transfer window. And Middlesbrough have come in with a £5 million offer. Uh, he's obviously worth £7 million. He's not very good for us. Um, he's injured all the time. He's not even injury prone, but he's been at least three or four injuries since I've joined the club. So he'll be leaving the club for £5 million. Good bit of business. Do I do it, boys? I mean, he's classed as a wonder kid. He's Italian. He's from Juventus. He's got very, very good um, technique. It's not necessarily a position we absolutely need. Would he be a player I would sign in the Premier League? He's not. He's not a player I would sign in the Premier League. Stop doing this, Sam. You just want to spend money. And there is Grant leaving the club for the five million to Middlesbrough. I've been searching. I've been searching for the player. You know, that special player who I would have spent big bucks on. And he doesn't exist right now. We've got £22 million, pounds, 120k spare in the wages. I think I'm just going to sit on it. I don't think anything more is going to happen during this transfer period. I'm relatively happy with the signings that we've made. They're obviously going to take some time. Um, oh, I really wanted Mazamiru. His, his contract's running out at the end of the season and I can't offer him a contract. Um, whilst foreign clubs can't. It's so annoying and Spurs won't even talk to me. So mazamiru looks like he's going to be joining rangers remember mazamiru i had him was it barnsley or birmingham i can't remember which one but um he was a good player and i would have liked to have brought him in but never mind we lose another one but that is probably going to be the end of today's episode can't see anything else happening if you have enjoyed it please consider leaving a like and if you are enjoying my content get yourself subscribed but until next time take it easy